But the best shot you've landed in both rounds was that yeah. overhand left. Yeah. You set it up tw twice really well. And you've got to think as well, you don't always have, because he's tall and that, you can like jab the chest, it doesn't always have to be to the head. Today we're going to have a look at my life as a pro striking coach and we're going to be focusing on two of my athletes, Fabian Edwards and Tim Wild, who are both headlining the Bellator Paris card in May. So Fabian's headlining the card against Gay Garb Musassi and Tim's on his undercard fighting Chris Gonzalez from the Alpha Male Gym in California. That's the famous gym run by coach Uriah Faber, so having a little bit of a coaching battle there. So I've already completed a breakdown of both Gago Masassi and Chris Gonzalez, which you can catch on a pro striking patron. And in there, I go into the details of the opponent's strengths and weaknesses and kind of giving the clues of where I think both Fabian and Tim can win. So we're going to be looking at some training sessions today. I've got pad work with both Tim and Fabian, and I'm going to be looking at some of their sparring footage down at the famous Renegade Gym in Birmingham, where obviously Fabian's brother, Leon, is the kind of team captain as he's just coming off a win against Kamara Usman in their trilogy bout. So it's exciting times down at that gym. So before we do that, we're going to look at how I break down a fighter, and it's probably the most intricate part of being a coach, and it's one that's often overlooked. So in breaking down a fighter, we're looking for their habits looking for things that they do consistently in most of their bounce. That's something that we've got to work off and it's like a high probability that they're going to do it in future bout, i.e. against Tim or Fabian. For example, Gay Garb Musassi likes to jab. So now working on my sessions with Fabian, that's going to be an area we focus on. So the first thing we're going to do is look at how to shut down the jab. So within the training session, you're going to see us working defensive things, how Fabian can position himself to take away Musassi's jab. It's quite an important part of being a coach. I mean, it's no secret that Gay Garb Musassi has a good jab, so I don't think I'll be giving away too many things there. So then you look at the opponent overall. So I like to pick a number five. If you look at five techniques that that person does regularly, otherwise it can get a little bit too much. I focus on those things that you know they do most frequently. So when we look at MMA, it's a big picture. So we've got things they do on the floor and things that they do standing up. We've also got that transitional period of how they get the fight to the floor, if that's their style. So Masasi, if you look at the breakdown I've done on him, you know, he's to summarize him, I would say he's a striker with good ground and pound. So he's not really going for too many submission finishes and he's very durable and tough on the feet. So with Fabian now, we've got to work on not only dissecting uh, Masasi and breaking down his game in terms of what he does well, well and stopping him from getting that going. But we've also got to look at how Fabian can implement his game best on Masassi. You've got to work towards a fighter's strengths rather than solely focusing everything around the opponent, which can then sometimes change your fight a little more than you'd want to. So that's the kind of like nuances of being a coach that, you know, really studies the opponent and then not having that kind of affect the training sessions too much or get into the fighter's head too much. I want to take the stress from the fighters. So they're not overthinking it themselves. I can lay out a blueprint that's going to make the training over the next eight to 10 weeks a bit more seamless. And again, takes that pressure and stress away from the athlete. A great example of a good game plan, go into plan, was my uh, star boy, Tim Wilde in his last fight with Saul Rogers. That for me was the best performance I've ever produced out of any athlete. The main reason is when we got there, we found out that Saul was a five to one favorite. That means Tim was a massive underdog. In a two horse race to have five to one, odd stacked against you is, is really like high, you know, so Tim wasn't expected to win that fight and he did obviously elevate himself up the, the Bellator rankings. But for me, it was particularly important because Tim had fully entrusted in me and my advice, followed me to pretty much the letter, consulted me on everything from, you know, how much rest needed throughout the week, like when he should spar, when he should, you know, maybe take a day off here and maybe go get a massage to the actual technical details, not just in the striking, but in, in some of the grappling. And my role then was to consult with the other coach, which at the time was Tom Coffey, who's a really good black belt coach down at Renegade. And between the two of us come up with like a good blueprint, a good plan for what was going to suit him best in the night. After looking at it and breaking down the fight, we then came up with some various areas we felt we needed to work on. And then we focused sessions and tailored them towards Tim specifically for those fights. So today's video is sponsored by Eric's Gear. Eric's Gear is an independent clothing sports brand, and I'm really happy to have these guys on board. I've bought a number of their items for both myself and my athlete, and the quality has always been brilliant. I definitely recommend that you should go over and check them out at ericsgear.com.
when you're Tim Wilde or Fabian, you fight maybe two to three times a year, maybe even only once a year. There's thousands and thousands of pounds at stake. There's obviously your name. There's a large amount of people watching. We had to uh, put a bit more attention onto the fight and give it you know, the respect that it deserves. And that's what we did with the Saul Rogers fight. For eight weeks, we focused on not only shutting down Saul's weaknesses, which at the time were you know, his top half guard, his ability to get the fights grounded from a body lock, and then the holes in his striking, which were matching it well with Tim's strength. Then we did a lot of footwork, we did a lot of angles, which were gonna both negate Saul's takedowns, as well as set up opportunities for Tim to land strike. And when I watched the performance, it was like virtuoso. So I sat there in the corner and I was really like proud of myself. And I was proud of Tim. Not only did I come up with a good game plan alongside Tom Corhey and Leon Edwards in terms of how Tim should approach the fight, but he managed to execute it under immense pressure in a big arena in a foreign country because we were over in Milan. And it was a really a special night, but it showed that if you put that level of attention into it, into the training, and, and you have that level of uh, basically being a bit of an MMA nerd, so to speak, you can really get fantastic results. And I do dare say Tim might not have won that fight had he not put that level of uh, attention to detail and, and focus his training camp the way we did. So my job being a coach, or you know, as Tim kind of labelled me for his fight, a head coach, you know, I, I took that quite seriously. But that means that I'm not just in there holding pads. I'm not just in there, you know, watching sparring. You've got to kind of view the fight all encompassing. So that means you've got to look at the grappling, you've got to look at the other areas, and then you've got to have this good relationship with your athlete. So obviously I have to get to know Tim on a personal level, not just know the techniques he likes and favours, but also his mind. How does he like to be spoken to? Is he someone that re requires to be shouted at in the corner? Or is it if I shout at him and speak to him negatively, is that going to have a negative impact on his performance? Is he going to go within himself because I've told him off? You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that go into coaching an athlete and it's it's much more than just the technical details, but then it's much more than just knowing the person as well. You've got to have that combination of both. And that can only come quite naturally and organically over time. So I've been working with Tim now for probably about a year to 18 months. And then it's probably in the last six months where everything's really started to fit together. I'm only just at the uh, start of my journey with Fabian. I have called him for a fight before, but then this is a big fight uh, with Gay God Massassi. And he's, he's asked me to help oversee his, his training camp, which I you know, feel like very privileged to be able to do so. But then it's still, in those teething processes where where I'm at with Tim, I'm not quite there with Fabian yet. So it's gonna take him a little bit longer to get on board with some of the drills and some of the things that I'm asking of him. And again, working alongside the other coaches, like in the sparring today, there'll be probably Dave Lavelle, probably be uh, his brother, Leon. My job is not to be so rigid with my thoughts that I think it's my way or the highway. I have to work alongside these other guys and their ideas and, and formulate a plan together that's going to be best for Fabian on the night. And this is a, a really big fight from really big stakes. And I'm excited to, to get into the camp with him in full swing now.